What is up everyone, welcome to today's news video. Now you guys absolutely destroyed me last night, you didn't want to let me sleep. I think we played Beat Saber until 5am, but we've got the elixir of life. So, let's get right into the news. So today's news stories are quite literally going to be VR on steroids, because we know that there is emerging technology, and we know that things are going to get absolutely insane, and people are actually getting quite concerned about like what data companies are going to start gathering, companies like Facebook, any private company in general, people are getting quite scared of like being able to gather data from eye tracking to know more about you as a person, and there's a lot you can find out from eye tracking. The first thing we are going to talk about is Facebook's AR technology, because Facebook is designing optics that are going to be much, much slimmer than optics that we currently have. And researchers at Facebook Reality Labs have shared new methods for the design and fabrication of compact holographic lenses for use in XR headsets. Now, currently, the lenses used in today's XR headsets are refractive lenses, which can be fairly bulky, especially as they are optimized for certain optical characteristics. Fresnel rigid lenses are frequently used in XR headsets to improve optical performance without adding too much bulk. In theory, holographic lenses are a promising approach for XR optics thanks to their ability to perform the same or even more advanced functions of traditional lenses, but in the space of a water-thin film. However, designing and fabricating holographic lenses with high optical performance is far more difficult today than it is with typical refractive optics. In an effort to move us one step closer to practical use of holographic lenses and XR devices, Facebook Reality Labs researchers have detailed new methods for creating them. This could go a long way to making it possible to build, at scale, the kind of compact XR glasses Facebook recently demonstrated, also known as Project Aria. So basically, Facebook is working on much, much thinner lenses, and so many people are not even going to touch the Facebook AR headset. It, that doesn't change the fact that what they're doing here is innovation, and innovation on a whole new level, creating new technologies and making them accessible to much more people. And some people are just willing to pay that price. So there you go. I think we can start getting excited about new AR tech coming out this year, or XR tech, or just VR, XR, AR bleh, bleh, tech coming out this year, and it's going to be quite exciting. Now talking about VR on steroids, Serial, and I'm going to call them Serial because it's like see real, it's like you're seeing the real world, have been working on light field technology. And we've talked about light field technology before, but in case you don't know what light field technology is, light field displays support both focus mechanisms of the human visual system. Vergence, stereo overlap, and accommodation, individual eye focus. This might sound complex, but essentially means that the new technology can allow VR headsets to focus at any depth, while most on the market today can only operate at a fixed focal distance. So imagine you guys take out your phone and you've got autofocus or manual focus, and you tap a certain place on the phone, it'll focus on that spot. Currently in our VR headsets right now, we've got a fixed focal depth, meaning Everywhere you look will be at the same focus level. Now, some places might be blurrier than others, and that's because the headset is actually just rendering like the center of the screen. That's called fixed foveated rendering, basically meaning that only the center of the screen where your eye is or should be looking is going to be in focus, and the rest is going to be rendered at a slightly lower resolution to allow the headset to perform better and put less strain on your computer or the headset itself. However, with this kind of technology, and I'm not saying that this is going to put less strain on anything because I can only imagine it's going to be more strain on everything, you can literally lift up a finger and focus on the finger just like you would in real life. That is going to bring virtual reality to the next level, and serials seem to be having some huge success with it because the footage you're seeing is a real virtual reality clip, and light field technology is absolutely insane. It's going to be huge for AR, and it's going to be absolutely massive for VR. It's basically going to allow you to begin focusing on things in VR and in AR just like you would in the real world. According to me, that is fantastic. That is just a technology that VR needs in order to bring the realism level up to 11 out of 10. And I'm very excited for this technology moving forward, and I cannot wait to see what Serial and other companies 
come out with. Let me know what you guys think about light field technology and whether you're looking forward to it down below. Now, yesterday we were talking about Apple and Apple and AR and what Apple thinks about the AR space and how it's important to Apple. Well, Apple, that's a lot of apples, has come out with micro gesture XR input and head worn haptics to guide user attention. Now, this is a patent they filed for. And as we all know, patents aren't always going to come into life. There are about a 50 50% chance that they are going to come to life. And some companies just file patents because why not? And a newly published patent application from Apple highlights the company's internal exploration of micro gestures for AR input, which involves using the thumb against the index finger as a sort of virtual joystick or selector. Another newly granted patent covers the use of head-worn haptics as a means of directing the user's attention toward virtual objects which are out of sight. Now, scrolling down to the comments section of this article made me realize that these guys are quite literally trying to patent human movement. Um, I don't know why I didn't realize this earlier. That's that's kind of funny. So the virtual joystick would essentially work like this. I mean, it's a pretty cool idea. The main problem with Oculus hand tracking right now is that we don't have something like this. We have to focus on gestures such as these to enter different menus. However, if we had a virtual joystick and if it genuinely worked, yeah, that would give us a way to move around in virtual reality without needing controllers. I mean, a lot of people will still prefer a physical joystick over this, but if it worked well, I don't see any issue with implementing it. Now, the interesting part here is the head-worn haptics. Apple seems to be a rather secure company, and I doubt they're going to focus on advertisements and collecting user data, but again, that might be naive of me. Apple does tend to see themselves as this huge secure company that doesn't collect user data, but you know what? What they're doing behind closed doors? I don't know. But I can see Facebook taking advantage of this in the AR space if they wanted to direct you towards a certain spot. And this isn't just Facebook. This is any company that comes out and is advertising based. If they wanted to direct your attention at like a certain advertisement, they could use haptics for that. It's kind of creepy to think about it. And I'm not a big fan of it. But literally any company, again, that is focused on advertising and is big into advertising, this is going to be a negative for. But it can also be a positive because in games, you can use those haptics to, for example, direct your attention to something that is completely off screen, which is really cool. It's kind of like in the real world. Sometimes you just kind of sense something before you see it. And talking about cool things, the Deca move. You know, the little thing that you snap onto your hips and it allows you to completely redesign movement in virtual reality? Well, there has been thoughts going around, especially when I chat with people in the VC on our Discord server, about adding Deca move support to phones, basically allowing you to use your phone as a Deca move. Well, Deca move have now officially announced that they will allow support for mobile phones and Steam VR trackers as DECA moves, and while it isn't the ideal solution, they are going to allow it. And I just want to say a huge thank you to DECA move for being consumer friendly and allowing us to actually use other devices with their project. That is just really cool of them and not every company would do that. So you guys are now going to be able to have your very own DECA move if you have a phone, and I assume you have one. And now an update on the haptic gloves. While my haptic gloves are still sitting doing nothing because I'm too busy 3D printing Oculus Quest mounts to start shipping them to people, and I am almost done my army of Oculus Quest mounts, Lucas has been hard at work. And while many people were quite disappointed that the last haptic gloves didn't have haptics, they are still haptic gloves because they are haptic gloves in the works. This is like part one of the project. And thankfully, most people recognize that. However, Lucas has released his very first video on YouTube. It's extremely professional, if you ask me. Like, seriously, I was very impressed. Like, my dude, that that is highly professional. Congrats. So do make sure to check that out. You know, it's the official video. It's always going to be better than a video I make because it's not my project. So do make sure to check out his video down below or right up here and give his channel some love. Subscribe, you know, give him a like and tell him I sent you because these things are going to be huge once the project is complete. And I honestly can't wait to make them wireless and to make them actually work with this glove. In fact, somebody made a modification of this glove in the STL files to make it genuinely work with those gloves. So I'm so happy I like sort of got to influence this part of the project in some way. 
because I sent in the exo glove and then somebody modified it to allow for the pulleys to be like mounted on it and everything. It's really, really cool. You guys need to check it out yourself if you don't know what I'm on about. But here's where it gets better. The virtual reality community is insane. We've talked about this before. If something doesn't exist, they'll create it. If the company doesn't want to give us something, they'll create it. Haptic gloves at a decent price. Full body tracking at a decent price. Questcraft, Minecraft on the Oculus Quest. Like seriously, all these projects just make me so, so happy. But the best part is once a project gets created, multiple others will spring up from it as well. And I was notified on our Discord server about another TikToker making haptic gloves. Now, I'm not sure whether these were directly inspired by Lucas himself, but they do look quite interesting. The design of them is quite a little bit different, and they actually seem to be more sturdy on the fingers, meaning they would be a lot easier to put on and take off, or at least that's what I'm gathering from this. They look very interesting, and um, yeah, I just thought I'd get that out to you guys. Give another creator a little bit of attention, because what they're doing is fantastic. And honestly, I can't wait to see more projects like this start springing up in our virtual space. Well, that is going to be it for today's video, guys. We got quite a little bit of news in there, quite a lot of exciting technologies coming out for us in the virtual world. For now, we need to end this video, I need to edit it, and I really need to sleep. And then I'll probably wake up in the middle of the night and hop on Discord again. So that is going to be it. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. But please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of the community, make sure to join our Discord down below and make sure to join our Reddit down below, where I want to see you posting your spice memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below or on mysticalstore.com and merch that still hasn't arrived to me yet. <laughs> so make sure to check that out down below. And if you guys want to be notified of extra content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.